If you're anything like me, you'll hold Pep as the king of tactics, breaking brand new ground over the past few seasons and dominating the league in terms of silverware. But he's been dethroned by an Aussie who used to manage in Scotland, Japan and Australia. Yeah, yeah, mate, Tottenham. Yeah, I know. Who's that new manager? What's his name? Ange? Is it a woman? Like most people, even the most diehard of Spurs fans, I was sweating for Spurs when Kane decided to leave the club. And with it, the guaranteed goals, season in, season out. Honestly, I had them written off for the season. And then this man arrived. So what makes Ange so special and why are Tottenham heading for the top four this season? So on the pitch, Spurs have been lining up generally in 61% of their games with a 4-2-3-1 formation. But it doesn't look like that on the pitch. Let me show you and let's start with the defence. So like the whole of the Tottenham team now, they look to disrupt the opposition and they do this in many different ways and I'll explain. So let's start with the ball at the goalkeeper. Nowadays with Spurs, you see the goalkeeper distributed to one of the centre-backs and the two wing-backs become inverted. Not just inverted in defence, but inverted all the way up the pitch, which I'll come on to later. With the pivot of Basuma in the middle, you will see this shape on a common basis, which is a series of triangles. And we'll come back to Basuma a little bit later, as he's key in this tactic. As you can see from multiple examples, the shape is exactly the same, so it's definitely well drilled in training. The eights play a slightly different role in this setup. From possession, from the back, they will drop where the fullbacks would normally be. You would say, why do that? Why not just have the fullbacks in their own place and the eights cut in a bit? But this is part of the disruption that the manager likes to do with the team, confusing the opposition and wrecking their formation. Through transition, when the ball moves through the opposition lines, the shape turns into an attacking 2-3-5 with two centre-backs. The two inverted wing-backs will join Basuma in the middle for midfield strength and Madison and Saar will push forward. With a centre-forward, in this case either Richarlison or Son who have been playing in that position this season, they generally drop into a false nine position. This gives them amazing dominance in the front line and in the midfield. Just to mention some of the players here, Madison is a bit of an outlier. He generally has a free roll and he, he literally is all over the pitch. And here's an example of Madison's free roll, picking up the ball from the defenders deep and acting as a deep line playmaker. But in this clip, Madison's energy and high press made this goal for Son. Madison is full of energy. He's always getting forward. And in this one, you can see lots of attacking-minded players setting up Madison for a goal with Basuma taking over the play and driving forward and then Saar sets up a beautiful ball through to the onrushing Madison. Udog is another player on to mention as here he's actually playing more as a left winger rather than an inverted fullback and Postagoglu really wants his fullbacks to be comfortable on the ball so they can make dribbles like this. Udogi also presses the ball all the time and he's pressed from the back here to create another goal. Udogi in this clip is acting as a winger from the left back position and he presses the play and sets Madison up for an easy finish. Moving on to Basuma, he's been absolutely critical in this formation as the holding six. Under pressure is great on the ball, it can easily hold off players and dribble away from them. He's got 85% successful dribbles this year and is a standout player for the club in this role. In this clip you see his ability to spray the ball around the pitch and with his 91% pass success rate, it's amongst the elites in the Premier League. His interceptions and tackling are also on point with an average of 26 successful defensive actions per 90 minutes. Wow. So what has that meant for Spurs? Well, Spurs have averaged over 17 shots per game on target so far in the Premier League this season. And the reason they move through the line so quickly is the tactic allows for passing lanes and triangles and diamonds all over the pitch. It's also meant that Spurs' average expected goals per game is 2.27, equaling or outperforming all of the competition they've played so far in the games in the Premier League. 
Whilst they also dominate possession stats in every single game so far, averaging just under 60%. So why do teams struggle against this tactic? Well, most of the Premier League teams are passing teams and they don't play the direct ball. And this suits Spurs perfectly because they're so dominant in the middle of the park and up front. It's very difficult for the opposition to get out. So how, how do teams beat Spurs? Well, we don't know yet, but my best guesstimate is a counter-attack low to mid block with a direct ball to two fast wingers. The problem is... If you're playing wingers and a striker, you've got to give up somewhere else on the pitch, either dropping a defender to a four or dropping a midfielder to a two. And you're still likely to get dominated by Spurs. So what about Kane? Well, they're definitely less reliant on him, that's for sure. But imagine him in that false nine position. What a season it would be hit for him and for the team. So is Kane a big loss? Uh, I don't think so, but it could have been if this tactical change wasn't made. So... Hands up, I was wrong about Spurs this season. I thought they would go mid-table, but for me, they're definitely a top four side for me this year. So Spurs use the half space, and in this video, I explain everything you need to know about dominating the half space in football. I'll see you soon.